Saul Bellow's novel Herzog, published in 1964, offers a glimpse into the life of Moses Herzog, a middle-aged man in search of meaning within the tense societal backdrop of 1960s America. The narrative unfolds through a series of fragmented contemplations, often presented in the form of letters. Moses becomes obsessed with writing letters to various individuals, both living and deceased, ranging from family members and friends to historical figures. This fixation stems from his emotional and spiritual turmoil triggered by the dissolution of his marriage and his deep reflections on the desolate state of modern society and human existence. Throughout the novel, Moses grapples with a profound sense of isolation, ultimately leading to a revitalization of faith in himself and the world around him. The story follows Moses, who resides in New York, as he dedicates most of his time to letter writing, whether on paper or solely within his thoughts. He pens letters to acquaintances, strangers, and even individuals who lived long before his time, including Dwight D. Eisenhower, Friedrich Nietzsche, his deceased mother, his intellectual adversaries, and even God. These letters serve as platforms for Moses to engage in debates about intellectual concepts embraced by these individuals or to confront his own thoughts and unspoken words. The novel begins with Moses' girlfriend, Ramona, urging him to take a break and stay at her place. However, he disregards her suggestion and embarks on a train journey to Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts to visit a friend. As he travels, Moses continues to write his letters. Upon reaching his destination, he retreats to the room arranged for him by his hosts. Before departing, he leaves behind a letter explaining his actions and then discreetly leaves the house. Moses returns to New York by plane and resumes his letter writing in his apartment. The following day is primarily spent immersed in his correspondence. He later visits Ramona's apartment for dinner and spends the night there. The next day, Moses reaches out to his lawyer, Harvey Simkin, seeking advice on gaining custody of his daughter, June, from his ex-wife, Madeline, and her lover, Valentine Gersbach. Despite Harvey's busy schedule at the courthouse, he promises to leave a message for Moses. While awaiting Harvey's response, Moses attends several trials, one of which involves an unmarried couple accused of fatally abusing the woman's son. After leaving the courtroom, Moses travels to Chicago later in the day. During his time in Chicago, Moses visits his father's former residence, now occupied by his stepmother, and retrieves a pistol that belonged to his father. The gun contains two bullets, intended for his wife and her lover. As darkness falls, Moses heads towards the house where he, Madeline, and June used to live. Peering through the kitchen window, he witnesses Madeline washing dishes. He then moves around the house and catches a glimpse through the bathroom window, where Valentine is tenderly bathing June. The scene reveals the genuine love between Valentine and June, causing Moses to abandon his plans for murder. Moses subsequently visits the home of Valentine and Phoebe Gersbach. However, Phoebe refuses to acknowledge her husband's affair with Madeline and declines to assist Moses in his custody battle for June. Disheartened, he leaves and seeks solace with his old friend, Lucas Asphalter, who has recently made headlines for attempting to resuscitate his tuberculosis-stricken pet monkey. Unfortunately, despite Lucas' efforts, the monkey passes away. Lucas arranges for Moses to visit June the following day. On the ensuing afternoon, Moses drives in a rented car with June when they are involved in a collision with a truck. While June remains unharmed, Moses is knocked unconscious. The police investigate the incident and determine that Moses is not at fault. However, they arrest him for possessing a loaded gun. Moses and June find themselves at the police station, where Madeline arrives to collect their daughter while making it abundantly clear that she despises Moses. Fortunately, Moses' brother, William, pays his bail and agrees to accompany him to his house in Ludiville, Massachusetts. Using the inheritance from his father, Moses had purchased the house for Madeline when she expressed a desire to live in the countryside. He invested all of his inheritance into buying and renovating the house, thoroughly enjoying the process, but Madeline eventually grew weary of rural life, prompting their move to Chicago. As a result, the house has remained abandoned for quite some time. William compliments the house, suggesting that Moses could potentially sell it as a summer residence. However, he cautions that Moses may not recoup the full amount he invested due to its distant location from typical tourist areas. 
In town, Moses arranges for the restoration of electricity in his house and hires a woman to clean it. He also discovers that Ramona has been trying to reach him. Moses contacts her, and William drives him to meet her. Moses invites Ramona to have dinner with him at his home, an invitation she accepts. William then returns Moses to Ludiville. Moses engages the cleaning lady, who commences her work in the kitchen. He decides to cease writing his letters and intends to stay in Ludiville for a while. Furthermore, he plans to bring his child from his first marriage, Marco, to visit Ludiville after his summer camp concludes. Throughout these experiences, Moses reflects on events from his childhood including his father's disappointments and the hardships endured by his family during his failed first marriage. He contemplates his tumultuous relationship with Madeline, the reasons behind her intense hatred for him, and the profound love he holds for his children and siblings. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.